In this coding exercise, we are going to implement the null object pattern. Now, if you've never heard of this, it helps to kind of think of a few practical examples. So let's say that we have our empty class right here. And if we try to create a instance of it, so if I say null equals null class dot new, which will create a new instance. And then if I call null dot it's some method, I'm going to get some type of error, which is expected. And the error is pretty explicit. It says that we have a no method error, undefined method, some method for the null class. Everything with that is pretty straightforward. However, there are times when this becomes a pretty big problem. Imagine a Rails application where you have a concept of a current user. So you have these current user methods that you call to pull in a user's name or something related to that. And what happens if you do not have a current user? So example, what happens when you have a page that you'll let any users access, guest users, people who just go to the URL, and if you try to call current user and then some method, you're going to end up with some error messages. And so you might see something like, you'll see code like this that says if current user, and then you have you know some type of process that you can pass to the current user but then your entire code base is filled with these checks to see if a current user is there what is a better practice is to implement what is called the null object pattern which is where you can create almost kind of like a you can think of it as like a black hole for objects where you can have a class and have it receive any type of method and not throw an error. Now, this doesn't mean that you want it to be completely silent because then that could lead to some very confusing code and some logic issues with your program. Instead, what you can have it do is return an instance of itself. And if that does not make any sense, then don't worry. I think going through some examples here are going to help. So let's look at our test cases. The very first thing that's going to happen before each test is we're going to implement a instance of null class. Now inside of the tests themselves, we have four tests. The first one sees uh, if we pass in and call null and pass the method something, which doesn't exist, we want this to equal the object. So this is very different than what we just saw. When we tested this before, we got an error and it said no method error. But by implementing the null object pattern, we're not going to get a no method error. We expect to simply get back a instance of the class object, which will that is a way of informing our program and informing us that the system is just giving back an object. It's not halting the entire execution of the program. So to take our example of accessing the current user, what this would do is bring back something like a guest user. You're not going to have the same concept of you know, having an error in the program you're not going to have a user, obviously, because one didn't exist, but this is a way of executing it and being able to catch those issues and to handle them more gracefully. Now, we also need the ability to implement some things like where we say that the null object and we say, can this have, does the method something, does, if we call null, does it respond to the method something? Now, by default, this is going to fail because this is the process that would happen if you actually have the method defined. So an example of this would be, say in our null class, we called or we instantiated something like some method and we didn't even put anything inside of it. But now if I call null and put in respond to and then pass in a symbol for some method. All this is doing is, is it saying, is our null class able to respond to this method? So if I run this, this should return true. 
and it does. But now if I remove some method right here and delete it from the class, if I run this again, it's going to return false because some method does not even exist in the null class, so it can't respond to it. But what we want is the ability to pass any kind of method to our null class and have it respond true to if it responds to, the, to that method or not. Next, we want the ability to pass in arguments to any method that we pass in. So if we say null.anything and pass in the argument of hey, it should respond back with the object itself. Now, in the last case, we also want the ability to pass a block to our null object and have it do the exact same thing. Now, this, the concept of implementing the null object pattern is incredibly extensive and covering it in a few minutes is not uh, covering every single aspect of this. A good example would be it, if you want to create a true null object, you'd also have to find various classes like the array class or the hash class. And if you call an array or a hash method on it, you would want it to return, say, an empty array instead of returning this type of object. So it can get very extensive. What I'm giving here and what this exercise is, is more of an introduction to the null class and understanding the basic concepts around it. But if it's something that interests you, I definitely recommend for you to explore it a little bit more. So we've talked about what it is. We talked about this expectation. If we come down here and we try running this, all of the tests are going to fail. So, and for a very good reason, but let's run them anyway, just to see what happens. So as you can see right here, we have four examples and we have all of them failing. And the reason for this is because right now they're going to be getting that error. So if I come up and look through here, let's look at number four, the one with the block. Here we have the null class returns a null class for method calls with a block, but we're getting the method no method error, undefined method, anything for the null class, which is exactly what we'd expect because we haven't implemented the, the ability for that to work. So how can we do that? Well, that is where metaprogramming comes in. We are going to leverage two methods and add them into our null class, and then they are going to essentially catch any methods that get passed in, and instead of returning an error, they're going to return the null class object. So the first one we're gonna call is method missing. And this is a built-in method provided by Ruby, and it expects three arguments. One is a name, the other is a splat argument, and the other one is a block. And what this is going to do is this is going to return self. So when, remember when we talked about the null class one and when we instantiate it and call a method, just like we do right here, what we're expecting here is to return the object itself. And by returning self inside a method missing, the flow for this is we'll create a null class, just like we do right here. And then it is going to be able to have any method. So I could do any method. It doesn't have to exist, and it is going to, instead of just returning a no method error, now it's just going to say, I'm going to return self. I'm going to return the object itself. And if I run this, you can see that now no method, or null with any method called to it, is not returning an error. Instead, it's returning the object itself. Now, if we clear this out, and save and try to run our test, we're going to see that we should have three of the examples passing and one failure. So that's good. That means that we have finished almost all of the implementation, but we're not 100% done. So what exactly are we missing? Well, right now what we're missing is the ability to pass in a respond to block. So that is the, uh, that's the next part that we're going to implement. So right here, what we can see is we have the ability to call this 
and have a method. We have the ability to pass in an argument and pass in a block. Now, really quick before we go into the respond to, the way this is possible is because of the way method missing works. That's the reason why it takes three arguments. The first being the name, so it can take any type of argument. The next one being the splat argument, meaning that you could pass any number of arguments to the method and it's still going to capture it. And the last one is the block. So this can take any method and any method call with any method parameters and it's still going to capture it. But now the one thing method missing does not do, it doesn't give us this respond to functionality. So it doesn't have the class with, it doesn't give the ability for us to call an instance of the class and say, hey, null class, do you respond to some method? It will still return false, as you can see if you run it right here. So that is the last thing that we have to fix. So all we have to do in order to do that is create another method, or I should say overwrite a method, and it's respond to missing. And this one is going to take just a name and then include private, by default, we want this to be true just based off of the types of methods in case you call one that's private, that kind of thing. And so now what we want is to say name 2s and then say or super. And so essentially what this is going to do is it's going to take the name that we pass to it, which is in this case, it'd be some method. And then it's just going to convert it to a string or it's gonna call super, but either way, it's going to be true because right here, we're saying respond to some method. We already are passing in the name and that's all we need to do. So now if we run this, we can see that on line set or on line 14 here, that now if we say null.respond to some method, now it's returning true. So this is giving us the behavior we're wanting where now we can treat our null class as that black hole kind of thing. And this is something I've implemented in a large number of the Rails applications I've built specifically for the concept of guest users so that I can with confidence call my current user method. And it gets a little bit more complicated because I don't only want to always return the object in those cases. I also sometimes want to overwrite it so I can create the concept of a guest user and also pass in parameters. So on spots where I call things like current user dot full name, it will return guest user instead of obviously just the object in its uh, kind of its place in memory. But now let's come back. Let's run our test. And it looks like, for examples, zero failure. So that is a introduction to how you can implement the null object pattern in Ruby.